Let's talk about storage redundancy. So nowadays, businesses need to be running almost 100% of the time. Regardless of whether you're a small, medium, or large businesses, uh, most companies will need to have all of their IT operations running at least eight hours a day, sometimes 24 hours a day, seven days, 365 days a year, depending on what sort of services you are running. So making sure that you've got the right high availability and redundancy configured into all of your infrastructure is extremely important. Apart from redundancy such as your server redundancy, making sure that your servers are uh, configured correctly with redundancy, they have multiple components inside that have redundancy built in, that your software is configured with redundancy, uh, you also need to ensure that your network is set up with redundancy such as your multiple devices, multiple links in place. The other important thing is your storage infrastructure, making sure that whatever storage is utilized, whatever storage is procured, that it has redundancy and high availability thought about beforehand when you are procuring that infrastructure. Buying your storage in pairs. Now this is a big thing that a lot of places may not be able to afford because it does, make, it does essentially mean that if you are gonna buy a SAN, you buy two. If you're gonna buy a NAS, you buy two. Um, sometimes in multiple sites, sometimes in the same site. Now sometimes that's not always possible because it is a cost effective thing, but always making sure that you know if your primary SAN or your primary NAS does go down, you do have another one to, to essentially have those services come up without any loss of data or operations. Whatever storage device you purchase, make sure that you are purchasing one that has multiple levels of redundancy built in. Something that is um, business grade uh, devices, right? So a lot of places may purchase a small, cheap SAN or a cheap NAS that is insufficient for a business, right? So a home NAS may not have the right, you know, may only have one network point and may not have multiple levels of power, those sort of things, so that if one of those fails, you've lost production. So buy one that has multiple levels of physical redundancy, one that has multiple power supplies, two power supplies at a minimum. So if one power supply does go down, the other one can still be powered and still be operational. Built into your storage device, whether that be a SAN or a NAS, have more than one port. Preferably have more than one port spread across more than one card. If a physical port goes down, another physical port can be used. Obviously they will need to be configured for failover and redundancy. They could be set up as active-active so that all data is passing through all of your connections. Or, or some can be set up as passive so that if one of those points fails, the other one can pick it up and you can continue as normal. But most storage devices, most NASs or SANs, will have a storage processor, which is essentially the smarts, the brains behind the actual storage device itself. It'll have your CPU, your RAM, those sort of things. So purchasing a, a device that has two storage processors, storage processor A, storage processor B, each with their own interfaces. So that if one storage processor goes down, another one can pick it up and you can continue. You have one storage processor, if you have any of those components go down, you lose your SAN, you lose your NAS, always have two. But making sure that these are also set up to automatically fail over. The last thing that you want is you have all this awesome infrastructure set up, you've got all this redundancy in place, but then if one of them fails, you have to manually go in and switch it over, right? And switch it over, doing it manually sometimes isn't viable if it was to happen in the middle of the night, if it happens at a time where people or staff are not available to do the cutover. So having it so that it does it automatically, automatic failover is imperative. Further to that, making sure that however you've configured your LUNs, your storage pools and your groups of disks and your LUNs, that they are split across your storage processes. So it's nice to have storage processor A and storage processor B, but making sure that you've got LUNs spread across the two for load balancing. You don't want all of the load resting on just one single storage processor. And as we said before, is having that process in place where if a LUN is running on your A, that if it does fail, it does cut over to your B automatically without any failure to any of your services. Think about how you're gonna configure the SAN or the NAS. The whole point of this device is it is a pool of disks. So you're gonna have multiple disks, however many disks you may have, Think about how they're gonna be configured. You don't wanna configure all of your disks on their own so that if a disk fails, you'll lose data. So think about things such as your RAID configuration. How are you going to architect your RAID? Are you gonna have multiple pools of disks 
set up in multiple different types of RAID groups. You know, you've got RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, different RAID groups, different pools, grouping the disks together in pools with data spread across, load balanced across these pools. So that if you do have one or multiple disks fail, if you have pools fail, you've got multiple levels of redundancy from a disk, from a data perspective. Following from that is how you're going to share and provision those pools or those LUNs, right? LUNs on a SAN, um, SAN perspective out to your workforce. So for example, if we're talking about a pool configured with a LUN that's shared out to a hypervisor such as a VMware ESXi host, you wanna make sure that you have multiple paths to a host or to multiple hosts. The last thing that you want is for one of these LUNs to have one path, you know, you can have paths configured over iSCSI or fiber channel connectivity. Fiber channel is a little bit more complex requiring fiber switches, which in turn would, you know, would, would require multiple links, multiple fiber switches as well. Um, but making sure that these, these zones, these paths are set up in pairs, are set up with multiple levels of redundancy. One of the paths to your ESXi host fails, you've got another one running, right? So each LUN, each storage uh, pool configured to go multiple ways, multiple ways around your path um, so that if one fails, another one can pick it up and you don't have any redundancy or any failure. We've talked about looking at getting everything in pairs, getting one SAN, better to get two, getting one NAS, better to get two. Uh, additionally to that is looking at um, uh, SAN replication or NAS replication. So this may mean looking at, you know, we've mentioned getting two NASs, getting one NAS or SAN set up in one place and a SAN set up in another. And a good example of this could be across multiple sites. If I've got site A with a SAN with 100 terabytes of capacity and I've got a SAN set up in site B also with 100 terabytes of capacity, setting up SAN replication across the two. There are tools in place to actually replicate all of your LUNs automatically from one to another. It's ongoing replication, continuous data protection. CDP is one of these te terms that you may have heard. So that all of your data is continually replicated between the two. So that in the event of a disaster, in the event of your SAN going down, services can automatically flick over right to your site B, they can become active. And then all you have to do is just repoint all of your infrastructure, your servers, your switches, your, you know, your firewalls to just talk to this secondary SAN if need be. This also forms part of your disaster recovery in the event where your primary site A goes down, everything can be restored from site B, or you could potentially run temporarily with site B on that SAN on site B as well. There are tools on top of that that you can set up, for example, for your virtualization, for your Hyper-Vs, for your VMwares, where you can actually have your VMs replicated from SAN A to SAN B. Um, so you've got your SAN replication, and then you've got a tool such as, if I use an example such as VMwares SRM, that actually replicates your VMs across. It utilizes the SAN replication technology, but then goes down to a granular level and does and manages the VMs that are being moved between one and the, one and the other SANs as well. So that in the event of a disaster, you can just pull up individual VMs, reconfigure them, bring them back if need be. I hope you found this video helpful. I really hope that you did learn something, that it was something useful that you can put uh, into practice and give you some tips when you are designing your IT in your business. Um, love it if you commented, give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.